Hey guys, Mr. P here. In this video, we're going to talk specifically about size, shape, and arrangement of bacteria cells. In the last video, we did a basic overview of prokaryote and eukaryotes. We highlighted differences from uh, the, the nuclear region in each of the cell to the, to the DNA of each of the cell to um, a little bit of the structures within them. So we're going to dive into bacteria cells specifically, but we're going to kind of highlight not internal structuring. We're going to highlight kind of external shape, size, and arrangement before we dive in in future videos and talk about internal structuring. So um, what does size, shape, and arrangement look like in prokaryotes? Well, size is very small. The average size of a prokaryote is 0.2 to 2 micrometers, and that is the diameter. So we are talking about the width, so to speak, of a prokaryotic cell. That is 2 um, to 0.2 micrometers, and length is 2 to 8 micrometers. Now, in, these, in this particular picture, these are spherical, so this would be a coccus bacteria, which means it would be the same kind of in width and length, but some bacteria, as you're going to see in, um, in a later slide, are not always spherical. Some of them are elongated, some of them are spiral, some of them are bent, some of them are rod shape, and so um, in an average, okay, average size, it is 0.2 to 2 micrometers in diameter and 2 to 8 micrometers in length. So that is very, very small. The shape of most bacteria are monomorphic, which means that they resemble a single shape. Like these particular bacteria are coccus. Some of them, like you're going to see in future pictures, is, you know, they're rod shaped. But again, that is a single shape. Some of them are spiral. That is a single shape. Some of them are square shape. That's a single shape. A few, however, of the bacteria are pleomorphic, which means they, they express many shapes. So they might have spiral um, areas, but they might also have other shape um, areas as well. So for the most part, bacteria are very, very small, um, and they exhibit a single shape. So a colony of bacteria will always look the same. In arrangement, there is quite a few differences, which you'll see in, in previous pictures uh, or future pictures as well, but some of them can be um, individual single bacteria, some can be paired, some bacteria can be clustered, some bacteria can be in chains, um, and, and, and some can be in octomers, some can be in, in quads. We'll get into all of those in a minute, but um, just kind of an overview, size, shape, and, and arrangement. There are various arrangements, there are various shapes, and for the most part, they fit within a pretty specific size range. So, when we talk about the different uh, terms associated with bacterial shapes, okay, some of the biggest ones, uh, the most common ones, are going to be the coccus, okay, so the round, spherical shaped bacteria. Um, again, they can be in a variety of arrangements, but the um, you know, despite the arrangement, coccus bacteria are always spherical. Bacillus, again, can be in a variety of different arrangements, but um, regardless of the arrangement, the bacillus bacteria are always these rod shapes, which are these elongated um, kind of rods. Now, the rods can be kind of different sizes within the colony, depending on how um, advanced the cell cycle or the binary fission step the particular cell is. Obviously, this cell is probably a little closer to dividing than this cell. Um, these two cells probably are pretty close to when they divided, um, so they're pretty young. Um, but again, we'll get into the cell cycle stuff later. Um, again, coccus, round, spherical-shaped bacteria, bacillus would be your elongated rod, rod shapes. Now, some other shapes would, would be vibrio. Vibrio bacteria look like bacillus, but they have a slight bend in the rod, so they are more along the lines of a spiral. You have, again, um, spirillum, which is even farther into the spiral, and then you have spirochete, which is even farther on the continuum of spiral. So if we group these into groups, the spherical bacteria are your coccus bacteria, your rod shapes are your bacillus, and then your spirals would be vibrio, spirillum, and spirochete. Again, vibrio, um, very non-spirally, but still part of the spiral group. Spirillum, definitely part of the spiral group, but not as spirally as your spirochete, which is you know your most um, elongated and most spiral out of the spirals. 
Now, one that wasn't highlighted yet was the coccobacillus. That's kind of a tweener between the coccus and the bacillus. So it kind of shares the name coccobacillus. It's not quite a coccus and it's not quite a bacillus. Um, I believe that the coccobacillus actually belongs to the group of bacteria known as the bacillus, but it is just uh, slightly less elongated than your true bacilli. Some of your kind of advanced um, or non, um, kind of your non-generic shapes uh, related to bacteria would be a star-shaped bacteria. Some of the bacteria are actually star-shaped, and some bacteria are actually rectangular shaped. Both of this picture and this picture show you an actual micrograph. These would be your transmission electron micrographs, um, which we've covered in previous videos. Um, it allows us to see internal uh, microscope or internal cellular structuring. Um, but you can definitely see the different shapes of these particular bacteria cells. Now, we've talked about size, we've talked about shape, now we get into the arrangement, which brings in more terms than any of the other groups. Um, there are quite a few different arrangements that you can see when you're looking at bacteria under a microscope, and the arrangement has to do with how the cells live in their colony. Okay, so... Um, both of these cases are kind of continuum. So we're gonna start with the, the most basic and we're gonna to work to the most kind of advanced. A single bacterium, in this case, a single bacillus can live by itself. It is a single cell, okay? It has its own metabolism, it has its own you know, DNA replication, all of those things. It can live by itself um, despite the benefits of being in a colony. Now, the single bacillus can divide via binary fission and go into pairs, which we call a diplobacilli in this case. Okay, again, we're talking the continuum of bacilli. Over here would be our continuum of uh, coxi, okay, or coccus. So a single bacilli or a single bacillus would duplicate and become a diplobacilli. Okay, that's literally just a pair of bacillus uh, cells. If it continues in a chain pattern, it becomes a streptobacilli, okay? Strepto is the prefix that means chains. If, and there's no picture here, but if it got into a cluster like this particular structure, but they were bacilli, it would be a staphylobacilli, okay? Strepto means uh, chains, staphylo, means clusters okay pairs again would be diplo if there was a group of four it would be a tetrad or a tetrabacilli okay um, cube like groups that would be a sarcina which again i've got these particular pictures over here i just don't have them represented by the bacilli um, for the most part when you see bacillus you will see either a single bacillus a diplobacilli a streptobacilli or a staphylobacilli okay you can also see caco, uh, or caco bacillus. That again kind of uh, gets into that really shortened, um, not elongated bacilli, kind of resemblant of a coccus bacteria. If we come over here to the coccus, again, these are your uh, spherical shaped bacteria. Again, you can have a single coccus or coxy. You can then have a pair of coccus, which is a diplococci. If the coxy bacteria um, kind of structure themselves in a chain, just like over here, streptobacilli, it becomes a streptococci. If they, if I sneak all the way down here, if they cluster, it becomes a staphylococci. If there is clustering, but the clustering is very um, distinguished and very uniform, then it can be a tetrad, which is when you have a group of four and then if you have a group of eight, it becomes a sarcina, okay? Again, this is a sarcina of coccus, okay, or coxy. Now, um, I've thrown a lot of terms at you, a lot of uh, vocabulary at you, but again, there is kind of basic uh, nomenclature or basic prefix suffix meanings for these words. Diplo, regardless of coxy or bacilli, means pairs. Strepto, regardless of coxy or bacilli, that means chains. Staphylo, regardless of coxy or bacilli, means clusters, and a tetrad means four, and sarcina means eight, okay? Now, 
you will see um, in future videos when we get into kind of in-depth bacterial um, understanding and inter internal structuring, we'll talk about actual um, you know, genus and species of bacteria. We've been pretty um, basic in these, in these first videos. We've been very generic. We haven't really talked about individual bacteria by name, okay? But just to kind of incorporate some names, um, some of the bacillus that would be pathogenic, which, which means uh, disease-causing, that you've probably heard about, bacillus anthracis, would be the bacteria responsible for the anthrax kind of bioterrorism uh, scares associated with some of the, you know, the, the previous um, you know, issues in government and stuff like that. That is a bacillus. Um, you also have strep throat bacteria, which would be Streptococcus pyrogenes. That would resemble this particular bacteria. So if you had strep throat, if you went to the doctor and they cultured the bacteria that were on your tonsils or in your throat, they would actually see that the bacteria responsible for causing strep throat would be a streptococci. Um, that is a chain of spherical bacteria. Another one that might result in uh, a disease-causing uh, disorder would be Staphylococcus aureus. Okay, Staphylococcus aureus, sometimes known as MRSA, which is multi-strain or multi-methylacine-resistant uh, uh, Staphylococcus aureus, is going to be more resembling this one. So it's a Staphylococcus, okay, Staphylococcus aureus that causes skin um, disorders and, and skin infections and stuff like that. So um, the, the specific bacteria by names aren't as important as the bacterial size, uh, shape, and arrangements in this particular video, but at least this video kickstarts kind of what will become all of our bacteria and eukaryote um, internal structuring videos. But you have to have a strong foundation in microbiology, and, uh, and part of that is the nomenclature used when describing bacteria by shape and arrangement. Okay, if you have questions, bring them to class. See ya.